I would like to share God's grace uh, regarding to sabbatical year, right? Regarding to the uh, blessing of restoration and regarding to sabbatical year. So today I am going to share God's grace with a sermon entitled Seven Blessings That God Gives on the Sabbath Day. Right, so when it comes to sabbatical year, uh, I googled it and it seems like I could be wrong. But it seems like the Jews at the moment, the, the nation Israel and the Jew people who are living in nation Israel, uh, do not keep the sabbatical year or jubilee. Uh, those who live in Israel and those, the, the Jews, they believe Judaism, right? Judaism. So they, uh, keep the uh, Sabbath, which is Saturday, right? Sabbath. However, when it comes to sabbatical year and jubilee, uh, one of the article that I found in Google said that because it is related to financial issue, right? During, during the sabbatical year, you have to release the, uh, the servants and slaves. And when, when it comes to jubilee, you have to return all these uh, lands to the uh, previous owner and things like that. And the basic idea is that uh, according to the inheritance of each tribes, right? So as you know that uh, most likely the, the Jews of today do not know which tribe they are, uh, be they belong to or they are from. And they, their lands, according to the Bible, has, has not been, uh, recovered fully. So, uh, I guess, uh, for these reasons, right, that the Jews do not keep the sabbatical year or jubilee, uh, in today's, uh, in today. However, I could be wrong. I couldn't find any detail about, uh, how they keep or when they keep. But if you find, uh, uh, more detail, please let me know. Right. Mm. Anyway, when it comes to a sabbatical year, there are a few different theological approaches and suggestions regarding to how to calculate it. Uh, because I believe the Jews do not keep the sabbatical year, so the theologians and scholars, they have to recalculate from the Bible when is the sabbatical year and when is Jubilee, right? But there are a few different versions, few different approaches, and few different suggestions. It is because the calendar we are using, that is called Gregorian calendar, or we can call it Julian calendar. Gre Gregorian calendar is the, uh, the, the amended, the updated version of Julian calendar, right? The solar calendar. So anyway, we are using, the calendar that we are using was created in 45 BC, 45 BC. So what about before 45 BC then? Uh, there, there must be some other calendars, but that's not the calendar that we are using at the moment, right? There, uh, the, there must be some other calendars, but uh, it's not the calendar we are using. So any events that happen before 45 BC, it has to be backdated, right? It has to be backdated. For example, we know that the year of the Exodus was 1446 BC, right? 1446 BC. However, there was no calendar indicating it is the year of 1446 BC back then, right? Uh, scholars in our time backdated and described things as if there was a Julian calendar, calendar back then. Therefore, depending on how to match the events recorded in their own calendar and the backdated Julian calendar, the years and dates of the past events or the biblical events can be different, can be said differently, right? Can, can be said differently. Mm. So what is the most biblical way that the history of redemption series is teach then? Right? What is the most biblical way that the history of redemption series is teach? We start from the ascension year of King Solomon. Ascension year, King Solomon. King David was the greatest king and one of the most powerful and famous kings in those days, right? Hence, many historians recorded about his son, King Solomon's ascension, right? And majority agrees that the year of King Solomon's accession 
uh, it was 970 BC. 970 BC. And we are not going to, we are not going through uh, all the details how to calculate it. But we know that, right, from there, we can calculate the year of the Exodus, right? Year of the Exodus, which is, uh, uh, 1446 BC. According to 1 Kings chapter 6 verse 1, right? 1 Kings chapter 6 verse 1. Uh, if you do not know how to calculate it, uh, don't worry. I think on, in the due course, we will come to the detail of how to calculate it. And, and we actually have learned it already before, right? But anyway, if you do not, if you cannot remember, and if you uh, do not know, if you haven't learned it, don't worry. In the due course, we will have a detailed time or the time for detailed calculation. Anyway, through this, the 970 was Solomon's, uh, Sol when Solomon became king, and according to 1 Kings 6 verse 1, uh, that we can calculate the year of the Exodus, uh, which is 140, uh, sorry, 1446 BC. Right, then, uh, how does the history of redemption series teach about a sabbatical year, about sabbatical year, right? So we don't, we know how to match, match together, right? About the biblical events and the, and the, 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 the calendar that we are using or the backdated Julian calendar. But what about sabbatical year? What does the history of redemption series teach us about a sabbatical year? I will briefly go through now, right? Uh, I don't have time to teach all of it, but we have learned it before. Uh, same, if you haven't learned it, if you cannot remember, don't worry. In the due course, I will come and explain once again. Right, according to the Bible, on the 15th day of the first month in 1446 BC, the people of Israel left Egypt. That was the day of the Exodus, right? The 15th day of the first month in 1446 BC. And then according to the Bible, on the first day of the third month, first day of the third month in the same year, 1446 BC, right? They reached the wilderness of Sinai. Wilderness of Sinai. Then there, Moses went up to Mount, uh, the top, top Top of the Mount Sinai, right? Eight times. And these times, God spoke and gave the law through Moses, right? God spoke and gave the law through Moses, which introduced the system of sabbatical year and jubilee, right? So this was the first time that God explained and introduced this sabbatical year, the concept of sabbatical year, and the concept of Jubilee as well. So if you look at Leviticus chapter 25, verse 1 to 4, Leviticus chapter 25, verse 1 to 4, I'll read it for you. It says, The Lord then spoke to Moses at Mount Sinai, saying, Speak to the sons of Israel and say to them, When you come into the land which I shall give you, then the land shall have a Sabbath to the Lord. Six years you shall sow your field, and six years you shall prune your vineyard and gather in its crop. But during the seventh year the land shall have a Sabbath rest, a Sabbath to the Lord. You shall not so, sorry, you shall not sow your field nor prune your vineyard. Right? So this is the concept, this is the system. The, for the six years, right, that people can sow and harvest, but under the seventh year, do not sow and do not harvest, right? Do not sow and do not harvest. Because the seventh year should be the sabbatical year to the Lord, right? Sabbath rest to the Lord. So when do you think? This system or this calculation should begin. In year 1446 BC, God introduced this new system, right? God gave a new system of sabbatical year, uh, sabbatical year in 1446 BC. So then which year should be the first, first year or which, which year should be the beginning year of this new cycle and new system? It should be 1445 BC, which is next year, isn't it? Because they are already living 
They are already spending, they already spent time, right? They already used the time in 1446 BC already, isn't it? They, the time they reached the uh, wilderness of Sinai was the first day of the third month. Right? So they already have spent two months of uh, 1446 BC in that time, right? Therefore, when God gave new system, right, and saying that the, for the six years you can sow and you can harvest, but the seventh year do not sow and do not harvest, right? The beginning of that new cycle should be year after, right? The next year. Therefore, 1445 BC, right? 14. 45 BC uh, should be the first year of this new cycle. First year of the new cycle. Then 1444 will be the second year. 1443 will be the third year. 1442 will be the fourth year. 1441 will be the fifth year. 1440 will be the sixth year. Then 14. 39 BC would be the seventh year, which is the first sabbatical year since the law was given, right? So the first sabbatical year after the law was given is 1439 BC, 1439 BC. After that, you calculate every seven years, right? And you mark that's the sabbatical year, right? So following this calculation, we can see, I mean, I mean, do you understand how, uh, how we found, how we find and calculate the sabbatical year from the Bible, right? Because God commanded on that day, on that year, so the next year should be regarded as the first year, right? And the same calculation, same method was actually used to calculate uh, seven-day cycle as well, seven-day cycle, right? Uh, if I just briefly mention about it, when God gave, uh, when, the, when the, all the food that the people of Israel brought from Egypt was uh, eaten and consumed all, and when they have no food, they grumbled against God, and God promised I will give you manna, right? Manna. And God said, for six days, you can go out and, and, and gather your manna, one omel per each, right? But on the seventh day, uh, do not go out and, and don't, don't gather it, right? Uh, do not go out and, 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 and because there will be no manna, right? So uh, when God teaches about this new cycle of seven days, right? Uh, it's the same that the, the day when God introduced new new system uh, was uh, actually uh, was actually Sabbath, right? Was actually the the Saturday, and then the first day, right? That the next day was the first day, and then after six day, uh, the 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 seven seven day cycle started from uh, from the day when God introduced this new cycle of seven days as well. So when God introduced new thing, right, the next day or next year should be regarded as the first year or the first day, right? That's how the history of redemption series is teach, and that's reasonable, right? That's, I mean, quite understandable, right? Mm. So that's how, that's how we get a 14 uh, 1439 BC as the first sabbatical year since the law was given, right? And following this calculation, we can see that the year Jesus was born, which is known as the 4 BC, right? The 4 BC, 4 BC was part of sabbatical year, part of sabbatical year, right? The reason why I say it's the part of sabbatical year is, uh, the, the, the Jewish calendar uh, starts from Nisan to Nisan, which means the first month to first month. But then sabbatical year calculates from the seventh year to seventh year, right? Tishri to Tishri. Uh, so uh, the sabbatical year overlaps two years, right? So when Jesus was born, 4 BC, uh, is considered the part of the sabbatical year, right? Part of the sabbatical year. And when Jesus began his public ministry, 
That is 26 AD. The Bible says when Jesus was about 30 years old, right? So 26 AD. And 26 AD also the part of the sabbatical year. Part of the sabbatical year. I mean, we only saw two major events that happened uh, related to sabbatical year. That our Lord Jesus was born, right? Uh, related to sabbatical year. And where our Lord Jesus began his public ministry, saving ministry, right? Uh, related to the sabbatical year as well, right? Then if we keep calculating up, up until now, it makes from sep uh, 19th of September 2020, right? I will just write it for you. 19th September 2020 until uh, 6th September 2021 uh, is the sabbatical year this year, right? Sabbatical year. According to our calendar, right, 19th September 2022, 6th September 2021 is the sabbatical year. So as I said, we are living in the sabbatical year, right? We are living in the sabbatical year. And if uh, the, the birth of Lord Jesus Christ and the beginning of his ministry happened and started and begun uh, during or within or related to this sabbatical year, Right? We are, we are, my hope and my prayer is that God may perform and, and pour out the blessing of restoration, uh, in year 2021, which is the sabbatical year for our Lord. And I please believe that our Lord, our God will, uh, perform and pour out His blessing of uh, restoration, uh, upon us in this year. Amen. Amen. Right. So that was an introduction. That was a short uh, introduction to the sabbatical year. Right. So we'd like to, we'd like to understand about sabbatical year. However, uh, in order to understand sabbatical year, we should understand Sabbath day first. Sabbath day. The reason is because sabbatical year is an extended version of Sabbath day. Right. Sabbatical year is the extended version of Sabbath day. So the, the meaning and the, all this, uh, me, uh, the origin is Sabbath day, right? So we should understand about Sabbath day first. So if you look at today's main scripture, Genesis 2 verse 2, Genesis 2 verse 2, it says, And by the seventh day God completed his work, which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had done. Right. So the Sabbath day, the Bible says, today's main scripture says, the first thing about the Sabbath day is the day that God rested. Right. Day when God rested. If you look at the Hebrew, the Hebrew word for the rest is Shabbat, Shabbat. And it means to rest, to cease, or to stop, right? To stop, or to cease, or to rest. So the Bible says that after God created the heavens and the earth for six days, that God rested on the seventh day. God rested on the seventh day. Then my question, and the question from the founding pastor was, did God stop working? Did God stop working? Does it mean that God stopped everything and God stopped working from this day onward? The Sabbath or the seventh day? What do you think? God rested, the Bible says, right? And then the, the, the Bible repeatedly emphasized about the, the importance of sabbatical day as the day when God rested, right? So did God stop working? Did God stop working? Jews understood as God has been resting ever since the completion of the creation. And many Christians also believe in the same way, right? You may have heard when you were young, when you go to other church, right? They say the, the Sabbath day is the day when God rested, right? That God stopped working since then. If that is true, 
Then why did Jesus say, My father is still working until now? In John chapter 5, verse 17 to 18. I'll read it for you. John chapter 5, verse 17 to 18. He said, But he answered them, My father is working until now, and I myself am working. Right? Jesus said, God is still working. Hmm. Jews thought, and Jews understood, and Jews believed that God, the Father, stopped working. They, he, have, he has completed everything by the seventh day, right? And he's in rest. He is in rest. He is in vacation. He is not doing anything else, right? But Jesus, when he came, he said, No, my father is still working until now. Therefore, I am working. So if, if God stopped working after the seventh day of creation, then how can we understand when Jesus said, My father is still working? If God really rested and fallen back from the working position, it isn't right, right? It isn't right for Jesus to say, the Father is still working, right? So does God, does God need a rest? Does God become tired or weary? No. The Bible says that God rather gives strength to the weary and power to the weak, right? God is the supplier, provider of strength and, and, and power to the weary and to the weak. God does not uh, become tired or weary, right? Even after six days of creation, even after creating heavens and the earth and all the universe and all the creatures that are living in it, right? God doesn't feel tired. God doesn't become tired or weary. God doesn't need to take a rest, right? God doesn't need to take a rest. If you look at Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28 to 31, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28 to 31, it says, Do you not know, have you not heard, the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the, creator of the ends of the earth, does not become weary or tired. His understanding is inscrutable. He gives strength to the weary, and to him who lacks might, he increases power. Though youth grow weary and tired, and vigorous young men stumble badly, yet those who wait for the Lord will gain new strength, and they will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not get tired, and they will walk and not become weary. So God is the one who supplies power and strength. God doesn't become uh, weary or tired. So how, uh, then why did God uh, take a rest? The founding pastor explained in this way. Imagine that you have a project of about 30 days. Uh, it can be a 10 days work, it can be a 30 days work, it can be a one year work, right? Doesn't matter, right? Just imagine that you have a project that lasts for 30 days, right? And you have set the plan. Phase one, right? Phase two, phase three. Phase one takes about a week. And phase two should be finished by next 10 days, right? And then phase three should have takes about another 10 days. And then about three, two to three, uh, the days left over, right? Uh, remain, the, remain three, uh, the last two or three days should be used as a day of inspection and day of, uh, uh, you know, thorough checking, right? That's your plan. So you worked hard and finished uh, phase one now, right? You've, you worked hard and finished phase one. So after you finish phase one, you can take a rest at least for that the remainder of the day, rest of the day, isn't it? I mean, imagine that you are working with team A for the phase one. You are working, you have to work with team B for the phase two, right? So when you finish phase one with team A, you cannot do any more work, right? So you took a rest at least for the rest of the day, right? 
Senior pastor explained that is the uh, similarly a uh, similar the po possibly similar explanation of God taking rest on the Sabbath day. God's plan is what? Last week we learned when God started a new thing, it is rela related to what? Salvation. It is related to redemption, right? So God's entire project is called work of salvation or the history of redemption, right? That's God's project. And God has just finished work of creation, right? Work of creation, which is the beginning of the history of redemption, right? Which is the beginning of the history of redemption. So because he got finished phase one, right? He hasn't finished the entire project yet, right? But because he fa finished phase one, he could take a rest. But that, that rest was temporal, right? That rest is, uh, that doesn't mean that God stopped working completely, right? After that, he stopped working. He is working again. That's the way, that's the illustration, that's the explanation that we can uh, use to understand these two things, right? On the, in Genesis, the God took rest on the seventh, uh, seventh day. But in John chapter 5, Jesus said, no, my father is still working, right? In order to understand these two together, right? That's the uh, understanding we should have. That God finished the work of creation, so he took rest. But his entire project, which is the history of redemption, has not been completed yet. Has not been fulfilled. I mean... <laughs> we are here yet, right? We are here yet. If that was finished, then we will be all transfigured and we will all be with the, with the Lord now, right? But we are not. We are in, we are living in the, in, in, on the earth, right? Uh, so the history of the nation has not been uh, fully accomplished, right? Mm. Right. So, uh, as I said, the, he, when he, God took rest, right? God took a rest. But since his entire project, which is the redemption, has not been completed, Father God had to work again, right? Father God had to work again. And he was working in the time of Jesus, as Jesus said. And he is working even today, right? He is working even today. For example, if your child is missing or lost, right, can you take a rest until he or she comes back? We cannot, right? You cannot. In the same way, the work of creation symbolizes the beginning of the work of redemption. And until the work of redemption is completed, God cannot take a rest. God cannot take a rest. The founding pastor says, as long as there is sin in this world, God cannot take a rest, right? As long as sin is in this world, God cannot take a rest. And if you look at Romans chapter 8, verse 22, Romans chapter 8, verse 22 and verse 26, it says, For we know that the whole creation groans and suffers the pains of child childbirth together until now. Right, groaning, right, groaning is an expression of suffering and pain, isn't it? Groaning is an expression uh, without comfort, without peace, and without rest, right? When you, when you are groaning, that means you are having pain, you are having, uh, you don't, you, do, you do not have a comfort, you do not have peace, you do not have rest. The Bible says the whole universe are groaning at the moment, right? Whole universe is groaning. And Romans 8 verse 26 says, In the same way, the Spirit also helps our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we should, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with the groanings to the four words, right? So the whole universe is groaning, and the Holy Spirit also is groaning. Right? Groaning means there is no rest. There is no comfort. There is something is wrong. Right? Something is wrong. So when there is a sin, God cannot take a rest. Right? God cannot take a rest. So here, what we can understand is, please know that our Father God 
will keep working, right? Until the history of redemption is fulfilled, right? No matter what, our Father God will keep working. Not only Jesus Christ, not only the Holy Spirit, but our Father God is still working. He is still ministering. He is still active, right? He is still living and active. Until when? Until uh, the history of redemption is fulfilled and completed. So I pray that may this word become the word of encouragement and word of comfort to your heart today. That our Father God is still working and He will never stop until the history of redemption is fulfilled. Amen. Right, then, uh, so if God is not, God did not need to take a rest, <laughs> then what was the reason? What could be the reason that God made a day of rest and God rested? Right? If God was not the one who become tired or weary and God is not the one who needed to re take a rest, then what would be the reason that God made the day of Sabbath and took a rest? I believe it is to show us that the work of creation concludes with Sabbath day. With Sabbath day, right? Without Sabbath day, the work of creation cannot be completed. What is Sabbath day for us? What is the main thing that happens in Sabbath day? Sacrifices, right? Sacrifices in the Old Testament. In today's term, that's the worship services, right? Worship services. So Sabbath day for us is, uh, is the day when we stop working for ourselves, but work and serve for God. That is what Sabbath truly means, right? It is not the day for, uh, for we, for us to take rest as well, right? But it is the day we stop working for ourselves, but we work for, we serve for our Father God. Right? So as in the Old Testament time, the Sabbath was the uh, day they people bring sacrifices to God, right? The Sabbath in today's term should be the day we bring uh, worship service to God, worship service to God. Of course, as you know, uh, after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the, 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 the importance of Sabbath is transmitted. Right, transmitted to the next day, which is Lord's Day. Right, in the Old Testament time, uh, the seventh day, which is Sabbath day, was the day that uh, the that has all this significance and all this meaning. But when Jesus came for the first time, and when he died on the cross, he died on the cross on Friday, and the Saturday, which is Sabbath day, he was in the tomb. Right, he was in the tomb. And he broke the power of death on the eighth day, which is Lord's Day, right? Which is Lord's Day. So Jesus set up new uh, system, right? Through his resurrection, the Lord's Day is the day of resurrection, day that the power of death being broken. So since then, the early churches and the disciples and apostles, right? They didn't keep the Sabbath, but they started keeping the Lord's Day. And all the significance and the importance of the Sabbath uh, transmitted, moved to uh, the Lord's Day. So, uh, the, for you and me today, right, we do not keep the Saturday, we do not keep the Sabbath anymore, but we do keep the Lord's Day with all the meanings and significance of Sabbath in Old Testament time, right? So, my... Uh, Understanding and my conclusion of why the work of creation, right, is completed or is, is, is concluded with the Sabbath is because, uh, the worship is needed. The worship is needed. Worship is needed to complete the work of God, the work of God. God create the heavens and the earth. I mean, physically, yes. Spiritually speaking, I explained already that the work of creation symbolizes the work of redemption, right? God shows this is how the work of redemption 
uh, would, would begin and would be, would be concluded, right? And at the end of it, God plays the day of worship, right? Day of worship. Worship is that much important. Keeping the Lord's day is that much important, right? If we do not keep the Lord's day holy, right? If we do not observe the, observe the Lord's day, if we do not give worship service to God on the Lord's day, right? The work of creation, work of God may not be uh, completed, right? May not be completed. You know, if you look at Revelation chapter 4, or Revelation chapter 19, verse 4 to 9. Revelation chapter 4, or Revelation chapter 19, verse 4 to 9. What happens there? The Bible explains what is happening in New Jerusalem, which is in the kingdom of God, right? It says, And the twenty-four elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshipped God, who sits on the throne, saying, Amen, hallelujah. And a voice came from the throne, saying, Give praise to our God, O you his born servants, who, you who fear him, the small and the great. And uh, Revelation chapter 4 says, night and day, right? Without ceasing, they, the 24 elders, uh, they praise God and worship God, right? So the worship is something that we will do even when we enter into the uh, kingdom of God, right? When we go to the kingdom of God, worship service is still there. Right? That's, I mean, that's how important it is. That's how important it is. The work of redemption, the work of salvation, the work of creation, the history of redemption concludes and it, it finishes, right? It's fulfilled by worship services. If, if, if fulfilled by uh, the Lord's Day and if fulfilled by worship services. That's, that's how I, that's what I believe and that's how I understand, right? And, and that's why I believe year 2021, right? In year 2021, we have to set faith determination, very strong and very strict faith determination that no matter what, we will keep all the Lord's Day and we will give all the uh, worship services on the Lord's Day, right? No matter what. It is not easy. It's not, it's not uh, uh, the casual thing, right? It's not, it's not light thing. God says, I mean, God shows everything and at the end, God plays the day of worship and that concludes every work of God. And that's, that's the reason why God gave us the Sabbath day to the people of Israel. And that's the reason why God gave us the Lord's day. So that we can stop our business and come back to God and worship God. Right? And our worship is the part of history of redemption. Right? History of redemption. When we worship God. Right? I believe the history of redemption will be fulfilled and will be accomplished. Right? Amen. So, uh, my brothers and sisters, in year 2021, I think the, 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 the first step to receive the blessing of restoration is to have a faith determination no matter what in year 2021, I will not miss the Lord's day Right? And I will give God worship service on every Lord. I mean, that's basic of every Christian, isn't it? I'm not asking you two bigger things at the moment. I'm only talking about the very basic of Christian, isn't it? But let's refresh our faith resolution and let's actually do it from year 2021. Right? Let's keep it. Let's give God the worship services so that God may be pleased and the work of God may be accomplished and fulfilled. So now, uh, the founding pastor uh, taught us that there are seven blessings that God promised to pour upon on, on the Sabbath day. In, so in today's term, is the Lord's day. So seven blessings that were poured out on the Lord's day, right? Or the Sabbath day. 
So if you look at Genesis 2 verse 3, Genesis 2 verse 3 says, Then God blessed the seventh day, right? So God blessed the seventh day. The second part is God sanctified. I don't think we have a time to study both of, the, both of it today, but let's focus on blessings, right? God blessed the seventh day. So what kinds of blessings that we can find from the Bible? First is the blessing of health. Blessing of health. If you look at uh, Psalm 92, verse 12 to 15, right? Psalm 92, verse 12 to 15, right? It says, The righteous man will flourish like the palm tree. He will grow like a cedar in Lebanon, planted in the house of the Lord. They will flourish in the courts of our God. They will still yield fruits in old age. They shall be full of sap and very green. To declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. Unrighteousness in him, right? Uh, so, you know, God blessed Adam and Eve to multiply and fill the earth, right? In Genesis. God blessed Adam and Eve to multiply and fill the earth. However, if you are not healthy, and if you lack of stamina, lack stamina, right? How are you going to make reproduction, right? And fill the earth. So in order to, uh, how? In order to apply, in order to make it happen, make this, uh, the order, command of filling the earth happen, right? Adam and Eve, God must prepare the, the, uh, the blessing of health first, right? Blessing of health. I'm sure that you uh, have experienced, no matter how uh, greatly, how much you love your husband or wife, right? If your body is sick, if you're sick, you're not really uh, uh, keening for, you're, you're, not looking, you're not really looking for sleeping together with your husband or wife when you're sick, isn't it? In the same way, in order to multiply and fill the earth, if you look at Psalm 90 verse 12 to 15, it talks about, uh, it talks about, uh, it yields fruit in even old age, right? God blessed them with this uh, reproduction, blessing of reproduction and, and, uh, and bearing much fruits. In order to do that, right, they must have the blessing of health, blessing of health. You can say power to make children, right? Power to make children. So that's the first blessing that God bestowed upon the law, uh, the, uh, upon the Lord's day. By keeping the Lord's day, right? God will give us the blessing of health, right? I mean, not only the stamina to make children, but everything else, right? Uh, to power to uh, win against the virus and, and the germs and all this uh, sickness, right? God will bless us. God will give us the blessing of health when we keep the Lord's day. And I pray and bless in the name of the Lord. May all of you in year 2021 keep the Lord's day and receive the blessing of health. Amen? Amen. Secondly, blessing of success. Blessing of success. If you look at Isaiah chapter 58, verse 13 to 14, Isaiah chapter 58, verse 13 to 14, it says, If because of Sabbath you turn your foot from doing your own pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy day of the Lord honorable, and shall honor it, desisting from your own ways, from seeking your own pleasure and speaking your own word, then you will take delight in the Lord and I will make you ride on the heights of the earth and I will feed you with the heritage of Jacob, your father, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Right? So God says, if you keep the Lord's day, if you keep the Lord's day holy, then I will make you ride on the heights of the earth. Right? I will lift you up. Right? Uh, I will make you successful where, whatever you do and wherever you go. So blessing of success, right? In business term, in, edu in, in education term, in whatever you do, right? Mm. The blessing of success is the second blessing that God promised uh, on the Lord's day, right? Mm. So uh, please keep the Lord's day holy 
and receive this blessing and enjoy it year 2021. Thirdly, the blessing of sanctification. Blessing of sanctification. Or purification, you can say. Exodus chapter 31, verse 13. Exodus chapter 31, verse 13. It says, But as for you, speak to the sons of Israel, saying, You shall, you shall surely observe my Sabbaths, for this is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that you may know that I am the Lord who sanctifies you. Right? The God sanctifies you. So this is the blessing of sanctification. God sanctifies those who keep the laws they holy. Sanctifies, uh, I think we will come to this point once again, right? But becoming holy, right? Our spirit being cleansed or our soul being cleansed or purified or, or we become holy, we become uh, sanctified, right? We learned about Ezekiel Temple. If you are not holy, if you are unholy, can you enter Ezekiel Temple? No, right? No. If you are unholy, if you, if you are profane, right? Then can you enter New Jerusalem? Can you enter the kingdom of God? No, right? How are we going to obtain this holiness? Of course, through the word of God and prayer, right? However, also, by keeping the laws day, isn't it? By keeping the laws day, God is going to make us holy. God is going to sanctify us. And if we are sanctified, if we became holy, then we will be able to enter into Ezekiel temple. We will be able to enter into kingdom of God. I mean, that is how important is to keep the laws day, right? If we're by the keeping the laws day, by keeping the laws day, uh, in, the, in a moment that we do not, we are not aware, right, that we will become holy by God's grace and by God's uh, uh, blessing. So blessing of sanctification. Fourthly, blessing of segregation. Blessing of segregation. Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 15. Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 15, it says, And you shall remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God brought you out of there by a mighty hand and by an outstretched arm. Therefore the Lord your God commanded you to observe the Sabbath day. Right? Sabbath day. Also, if you look at Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 12, Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 12, And also I gave them my Sabbaths to be a sign between me and them, that they might know that I am the Lord who sanctifies them. Right. So what is, what is happening here is, God separates, God segregates, God divides the people. Right. By whom? By those who keep the Lord's day and those who do not keep the Lord's day, right? Those who keep the Lord's day and those who do not keep the Lord's day. God is separating, segregating them. So by keeping the Lord, I mean, keeping the Lord is the sign that we are the people who keeps, who, who, who keeps the Lord, sorry, who keeps the Lord's day. God is separating these two groups of people. Those who keeps the Lord's day, and those do not keep the Lord's day. Then at the end, what happened? Matthew chapter 13, verse 30. Matthew chapter 13, verse 30. It says, Allow both to grow together until the harvest. And in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, First, gather up the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them up. But gather the wheat into my barn. Right? So those who keep the law, laws day, right? They surely are the uh, wheat, right? And those do not keep the laws day, right? They surely be the tares, right? And God says, let them grow together. Let them be there together. But they are segregated already. They are separated. By what? By keeping the laws day, right? And if God says that the, if you are wheat, then you will go into my barn. You will go into my kingdom of God, right? And if you are there, then you will be burnt, right? You will be burnt. I mean, I'm repeating myself. That's how important it is to keep the law's day, right? It is not just the uh, uh, what attitude of the Christian, but it is actually life and death matter to us. 
if we worship God, if we keep the Lord's day and worship God, right, that will give us, that will bring us uh, life of God to us, life of Jesus Christ to us, life of the Holy Spirit to us, right? Mm. The fifth blessing is the blessing of perpetual covenant. Blessing of perpetual covenant. Exodus chapter 31 verse 16. Exodus chapter 31 verse 16. It says, So the sons of Israel shall observe the Sabbath to celebrate the Sabbath throughout their generations as a perpetual covenant. Perpetual covenant. Uh, in this uh, regard, uh, the, the founding pastor explained in this way, right? Uh, I mean, this is how I understood and how I explained, right? The covenant is the promise that God made through the word, right? R word of God. We learn through the history of redemption series, right? And is anyone worthy? Is anyone or everyone worthy to ratify covenant with God? No, right? We learned that the covenant can only be made, can, can only be ratified with equal entity, right? Equal uh, level, equal position, equal uh, uh, equal position, right? If one is a king, then the other has to be king as well, right? King and slave cannot uh, ratify a covenant, right? However, if we look at Exodus chapter 31, verse 16, the Bible says that the, if we keep the Sabbath, right? If we keep the Sabbath day, right? Then God will, that keeping the Sabbath will be the perpetual covenant. Perpetual covenant. It means that by keeping the Lord's day, we will be made worthy enough to ratify covenant with God, right? Worthy enough to ratify covenant with God. The perpetual covenant will be given to us means what? We will be made worthy enough to ratify covenant with God. Oh, what, a, what a blessing. We all want to become covenantal people, isn't it? We all want to be in God's covenant, right? We all want to be want to receive God's covenant, isn't it? And by how? By keeping the Lord's day, right? We will be given this perpetual covenant. And one more thing is, because it is a perpetual covenant, it is the promise that uh, ratified through the word of God, right? God will make sure that covenant will be fulfilled, right? That God will make sure his promise to be fulfilled. Uh, the sixth is blessing of joining together. Blessing of joining together or blessing of union, you may say. Blessing of joining together. Isaiah chapter 56 verse 2 to 8. Isaiah chapter 56 verse 2 to 8. I will not read all of it, but let me just read some. How blessed is the man who does it and the son of man who takes hold of it who keeps from profaning the Sabbath and keeps his hand from doing any evil. Let not the, let not the foreigner who has joined himself to the law say, the law will surely separate me from his people. Neither let the eunuch say, behold, I am a dry tribe. For thus says the law the, to the eunuch who keep my Sabbath and choose what pleases me and hold fast my covenant to them. I will give in my house and within my words a memory and a name better than that of sons and daughters. I will give them an everlasting name which will not be cut off. Right. So by keeping the Lord's day, we become joined to God, right? We become one with God, right? We become one with God. If, if the Gentile, right, it says that the, uh, who keeps from profaning the Sabbath and, uh, sorry, verse 3 says, let not foreigner who has joined himself to the law say, uh, the law will surely separate me from his people, right? God is saying, no, no, I'm not going to do it. You joined me, right? How can we join God? How can we become God? I mean, how can we become one with God? How can we unite it with God? How can we become one with God? Bible says, if you keep the Lord's day, right? You are, you are joining with me and you can become one with me, right? The blessing of becoming one, blessing of joining together with God. That is also uh, the blessing that we will receive when we keep the Lord's day holy, 
right? And the founding pastor explained that not only joining, joining together with God, but also joining together with the other people as well, right? There are many families uh, nowadays that uh, the father, mother, children are all separated, right? They are all living individual life, right? They are not, they are, there is no more oneness anymore, right? But when we keep the Lord's Day holy, God says that the, I will make you one family once again. I will make your church one church once again, right? No more separated church, no more divided church, right? But by keeping the Lord's Day, I believe that God will pour out His blessing of becoming, making us one. We are one spiritual family with one same Father. Amen? And that blessing will be given to us when we keep the Lord's day holy. Lastly, seventh blessing is the blessing of eternal rest. Blessing of eternal rest. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1 to 10. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1 to 10, but I will read verse 8 to 10 only. It says, For if Joshua had given them rest, he would not have spoken of another day after that. There remains thereafter a Sabbath rest for the people of God, for the one who has eternal, sorry, one who has entered his rest has himself also rested from his work and God did from his. Right. So the Bible is saying that uh, there, there is the, the rest remain, right? Rest remain. The Sabbath remain. We have to go into that Sabbath. And the keeping the laws they uh, today is a type, is a reminder of that we have a better Sabbath. We have a better rest. We have an eternal rest at the end of it, right? It reminds us by keeping the Lord's Day, by giving God ser uh, services on the Lord's Day, right? It becomes our reminder. It becomes our type. It becomes our, uh, 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 yes, reminder, right? Uh, to uh, remember that uh, on the last day, right, there is the rest, the eternal rest that we are going to enter and receive. Eternal life we are going to receive. The transfiguration that we are going to receive, right? So my brothers and sisters, I think today I have spoken uh, quite long, so I'll finish now, right? Mm, uh, the Lord's Day, Keeping the Lord's Day is that important and so important, right? So, in order to receive the blessing of restoration, let's have this faith determination in our heart and let's fulfill it, right? Let's accomplish our resolution in year 2021 that no matter what, I will not miss the Lord's Day, I will not miss the, any service or service on the Lord's Day. And I pray with my whole heart, and I bless in the name, powerful name of the Lord, that may all these seven blessings be poured upon those who keep the Lord's Day holy in year 2021. Amen. Let's pray.